I'm Carolyn Holzman, and this is Confessions of an SEO. The purpose behind this podcast is to bring, I think, SEOs together with a better understanding of what we actually do and how to really support each other, and also with the businesses that they serve to experience a more reasonable balance of power. So let's begin. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 26 of Confessions of an SEO. I do appreciate you taking the time to listen to what thoughts come springing to mind when I start thinking about what's happening in SEO and all the things that I'm working on this week. I am all fired up and ready to go. Now, I I know, I know on the surface, it's going to seem like I'm Google bashing again this week, and some of you probably enjoy that vicariously, but how can you blame me? They give us so much good material. And another thing. Why do SEOs who know they are talking to SEOs offer up articles on Google talking points as a solution to a problem? So what am I going on about? Well, it's entirely possible that you may not have heard about this, but this past week, or actually like probably two weeks uh, by the time you're hearing this, um, there are people who cannot or were not able to get their new sites or their new pages crawled. Not just crawled quietly, but not crawled with a big, fat, bright red rectangle in Search Console saying, indexing, request, rejected. Now, I came to this because a colleague came to me. He'd been working on a site for months, had an investor who loved the niche, was ready to write a check this past Monday, but they noticed that even though the site had launched, there was an issue with the homepage not being bindable. Kind of a big deal and kind of also a big deal breaker with an investor. I get it. Christ. At that time, there wasn't a lot of contemporary questions or comments about what was happening. And there wasn't a lot in Facebook groups. Mostly you could find things um, about 12 months ago uh, when some people were experiencing that. Now, Rank Math, was the most authoritative resource. And they had come with some clear ideas. I'll post the link, but I'm not recommending you do any of it at this time because none of the recommendations would have helped in this particular case. And I will share with you why that is. But at the time, we didn't know it. So we grabbed up all the shreds of hope and drove in. So um, it talked about setting the crawl rate uh, speed, We check the server feedback in the settings, the server connectivity data, Um, the HT file access, which was easy enough. Some said that they had uh, found they had corrupted HT access files. So so we tested for that. That didn't work. Minified CSS and JavaScript, um, and then looked at page speed, you know, the file size of the images. We even looked at actually changing hosting services. Nothing. Nothing gave a glimpse of any solution. And then we found a YouTube video, which had been published five hours earlier with a title that was related to what we were experiencing and the word solution. Now, the video itself wasn't in English. So one of us watched and the other one pulled a transcript using software. Now, at some point, I realized that in a nice way, if I could say it this way, he probably didn't know what the world word solution really means. Because at no time during the video was there any action taken that revealed a different result other than that same damn error message. Indexing, request, rejected. So then it occurred to me, what if this is something that's turned off or broken at Google? And here we are, twisting ourselves into pretzels, taking that message as gospel, trying to make this content more appealing to some new requirement that we weren't quite sure about, when perhaps what we were doing was more like dead man walking. We could try every one of these steps, but ultimately it had zero impact on creating a different result. So long-time listeners kind of know that this is the way my brain works. So I started thinking, how can I tease something out of something that I have access to 
that would give me a clue as to what Google was actually doing. That I, I didn't have to see that big, fat, red rectangle box with error message. I'd be looking somewhere else. Well, that sounded an awful lot like server logs to my thinking. So I started to pull logs. And yikes. Normally, I see lots of bot activity, and I'm familiar with my friend's sites. Um, I've seen normal logs of his content, and the bots are there all the time. They're flying through, rendering, updating, crawling, everything. But there was something wrong here. Robot's text file was crawled two times within three days. What the hell? That is not normal. And it was around the time that as we'd gotten into this process, that we started to see others start to speak out online and share what was happening to them. And it was exactly the same thing. So what are the odds that so many across the world would be experiencing the same result? And not 100%. You know, it wasn't everybody getting these error messages. But it seemed to be sufficiently common to at least raise up the, uh, to post the question to Google. And usually that happens on Twitter. And, and basically, you know, there's a problem. Can you look into this? Well, obviously they did get some response and I'll shortcut it for you. Um, they said, indexing is fine. Too many people are spamming the request indexation button in Search Console. Basically, there are indexing service marauders who have overwhelmed our systems. Wait, pull the cover over. Okay, now I am paraphrasing their response, except for the, the thing indexing is fine. <laughs> and they did say that too many people were spamming the request indexation button in Search Console. But remember, we do have limits in there. So that didn't make sense. That's not logical. So how, this is my question, now how likely is it that indexing service spammers could overload such an enormously sophisticated technology provider like Google, a uniquely technologically advanced worldwide organization with tons of money behind them and massive data centers, how could all of that bring them to a standstill for a portion of the service? I, I know they probably came up with that response, you know, so I, I do paraphrase. This, this is basically it. It's your fault, you indexing requesting whores. Your despicable desire for instant indexing is what brought it down on your heads. <laughs> Let us find your stupid pages. You don't have to tell us. We have more important things to do. Go away. Indexing is fine. That's, that's kind of like how it feels like. All right. And then on Monday, I kid you not, the error messages that were in, in big red rectangle boxes um, they all turned into temporary processing errors. So if there's anybody out there who remembers George Carlin's routine, comic, he's a comedy guy, comic, stand-up comic, and he did this amazing thing comparing football to baseball. So that message in Search Console reminded me of, of that routine. It went from host load exceeded to temporary processing error. And then it was, it was Monday. Cue the Google apologists. They came out of the chute very strong and hot. Here's an example. And again, I do paraphrase because this is my show and I can do what I want. You stupid people who know very little about engineering don't you know Google is a company that earns $270 billion a year in profit and has way more engineers than you can count? They have more things to worry about than your puny little operation whining about getting your lousy content instantly indexing and not being able to. So here, here's what I got to say is, why you got to be so mean? You know, I want to go back and ask this. How likely? Is it that indexing service spammers could overload such an enormously sophisticated technology provider like Google 
one with such advanced technology, a worldwide organization with massive data centers, and these hordes of indexing marauders managed to bring down a portion of the service. You know, because if that were possible, why the hell would Google have ever admitted that it was possible? So it reminded me of the similar logic process. You know, um, do you know the movie A Few Good Men? Tom Cruise is an attorney. And he was, there was a pivotal, pivotal moment in the movie where he's interviewing the colonel, which everybody is pretty sure going to be promoted. So his question was, if you gave an order that Santiago wasn't to be touched and your orders are always followed, then why would Santiago be in danger? So if Google is an engineering model of complexity so great that we can't even comprehend it, and they claim the disruption of the indexing system was that too many people were requesting indexation, why would Google ever admit that that was a possibility with their engineering model? I know, I know, it, it's a publicly traded company, I get it, you know, is that really what they want the world to accept as possible? You know, but here's where I'm kind of different, okay? I don't really care that it was Google's fault. Here's what bothers me, and it's twofold, not just one, but two. One, they blame it on spammers who want their content indexed. And let's be clear, this processing error was likely affecting all of our sites. I will come back to this. I have data on this. And two, our SEO community, our industry, those that to all extent and purpose have unofficial power in our industry, for the most, we're like, yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full, sir, we ask to be indexed, shame on us. And then basically, these same people turn around to tell us, those of us who are trying to raise the issue to get clarity, we were met with, back down, it's your site, it's your crawl rate. If you understood the indexation system and the quality of your content, which it probably isn't, settle down, read this article that has nothing to do with what is happening now. And the list goes on. And all I got to say is, what the hell, people? Ah, I will calm down. It's like I spent the last two years, in a way, preparing for just this very moment. I know what normal bot activity looks like. I know what it looks like when your content is good. I know what it looks like your content is crap. Now in normal times, I know what it looks like. In an update, I know what it looks like. After an update, I know what it looks like. And when they build and launch new Chrome builds, I know what it looks like. This is not normal, people. Are you in charge of telling which bot to come? Because I do know something about bots and indexation. And I'll tell you right now. None of this was within our control. So let's go back to what the story is in the server logs and what they tell us, because I assure you that is closer to the truth than anything else you're going to find published on Google, unless someone's talking about server logs. And I'm going to go back to what was happening when we were assured the issue was with our sites. So quick little background, don't worry, it's not going to break your brain. The same bot that comes when people request indexation through Search Console is the same bot that comes when we use the mobile friendly tool, which by the way, is going away next month, and the rich snippet tool. So the error was not just coming from the Search Console. It's coming from the testing tools as well, the same damn message, and somehow it wasn't appearing to impact all sites. But is that even true? Could all of our sites somehow all have been subjected to what I'm calling the crawling system dysfunction, uh, where some, you know, it's it, like we all experienced it as dysfunction, but only some received an error message and others did not. So earlier this week, in the indexation test, I launched uh, a new page and zero bots arrived. 
Hmm. I resubmitted the XML sitemap from Search Console. I didn't tell Google anything else about the page. I just simply submitted the XML sitemap. And when you do that, there's information that tells you what's happening with that submission. And so in this case, it updated, uh, the words updated to read uh, success, and the success was colored in green. And the read date updated to the actual day that I submitted. Uh, so the submitted and read were the same dates. And about 20 minutes later, I checked the server logs. Somehow, Google came looking for a sitemap without using the full URL of the sitemap. So instead of the file ending with the letters XML, it ended with XM, no L. So what happened was Google came, asked for a site that basically doesn't exist because mine has an L on it. Everyone's has an L on it. Um, so it pulled it as a 404 status. And that was evidence of an error in the crawling system. Now, just in case you're thinking, hey, Carolyn, maybe you typed it in that way and your entry was wrong and you just made a mistake and Google just copied you. Yeah, I considered that. So I went to another site in Search Console and I posted the sitemap URL, but I removed the last letter of the file. So it was, you know, sitemap.xm. And I wanted to see if I received a success message. A anybody want to bet me on this? <laughs> well, instead of the word success in green, it was red, the color red. And it said it couldn't fetch. Sitemap could not be red. So that meant that there would be no way that anyone submitting their sitemap would have gotten any inkling of the error unless they were also in the practice and custom of reading their server logs. So who are we going to believe? Google or our lying eyes? Well, that's it for this week. Check out Crawl or No Crawl reports for updates on this incident and anything else I want to throw at us. Thank you to the supporters of Confessions. Thank you for being a listener. Please come back. Bring a friend. And if you like this content, this type of SEO content and stories and, okay, Google bashing, consider becoming a sponsor. It's been my pleasure to be with you today, and I'll see you in the service.